Welcome everyone. This is the first of three videos in which I will describe the steps required to prepare and purify an organic liquid. In the first video, I'll describe the process of reflux used to prepare a sample of ethylophanoate. I will refer to the procedures given in the AQA A-Level Chemistry Required Practical Handbook. The content of the videos is relevant to all A-Level Chemistry students. The process of reflux is also studied in Units 4 and 14 of BTEC Level 3 Applied Science. At the end of the video, there is a bonus question taken from an A-Level Chemistry Pass paper. This question will challenge what you have learnt about the procedure for reflux and I'll take you through the model answer step by step. Let's get started. Here's an overview of the process. A reaction will occur more quickly, at a faster rate, if reactants have more energy. Activation energy is the minimum energy needed when particles collide for a reaction to take place. To increase the rate of a reaction, we can heat the reactants up. We can do this with a Bunsen burner, usually with a water bath, or a heating mantle. Quickfit apparatus is commonly used in the laboratory to carry out reflux and distillation techniques. This apparatus allows the connection of different pieces of glassware easily. The connections are gas tight. There is a variety of different shapes and sizes of glassware manufactured under the Quickfit brand. On the left we can see two different sizes of round bottom flask. Reactants can be heated in a round bottom flask. The shape of these flasks allows for an even distribution of heat and reduces the risk of the glassware cracking. Pear-shaped flasks have a similar use. The shape of these flasks allows liquid products to be poured out more easily, leaving solid impurities behind. A condenser is used for reflux and distillation techniques. Water flows in and out of a condenser. We will look at this apparatus in more detail later in the video. A water bath can be used when heating the reaction mixture. The water level needs to cover the level of the reaction mixture. Ideally, the beaker of water should be less than half full. This will prevent spills if the water boils. A round bottom flask containing the reaction mixture can be placed inside the larger beaker. The beaker is placed on top of a tripod with gauze. A Bunsen burner on a heat proof mat is placed beneath the beaker. Using a water bath ensures that the reaction mixture never exceeds about 100 degrees Celsius. If the reaction vessel cracks, any flammable substances leak into the water rather than onto the flame where they could ignite. If the reaction mixture were to be heated using this setup, the reactants would boil, evaporate and escape. A condenser must be fitted to the round bottom flask. It is essential that the water goes in at the bottom and out at the top. This ensures that cold water is continually replaced and air bubbles are pushed out. When gases come into contact with the cold glass walls of the condenser, they turn back into a liquid. The diagram on the left shows apparatus set up for reflux. A heating mantle can be used as an alternative heating method instead of using a water bath. This apparatus is plugged into an electrical socket. There is no naked flame and the temperature can be controlled with a dial. And here is a photograph of the same setup. Reflux is the continual boiling and condensing of a reaction mixture. This provides the energy required for particles to react without any chemicals escaping as gases. Before heating, anti-bumping granules must be added to the reaction mixture. Anti-bumping granules are porous and inert. They absorb air bubbles formed when the liquids boil before they become too large. Large bubbles, known as bumps, will be dangerous. A reflux is taking place here. We can see the contents of the pear-shaped flask are boiling, they are bubbling. If you look closely, you will also see that gases are condensing, turning back into a liquid and dripping back into the pear-shaped flask. This is a procedure that could be used to prepare a sample of ethylophanoate. Please note that any practical work must only be carried out under the supervision of persons qualified to do so after completing a risk assessment. I won't read each line, you can pause the video if you want to do this. In the next video, I'll show you the balanced equation for preparing a sample of ethylophanoate. Following the preparation, the ethylophanoate has to be separated from other substances that are present at the end of this reaction. In the next video, 
I'll show you what a separating funnel is and how it can be used to isolate the e-file of Anoite. And as promised, here's the bonus question. Halo alkane E is hydrolyzed. 0.0100 mole of E is refluxed with excess NaOH to form F and impurities. Draw a label diagram to show how the student would carry out the hydrolysis of halo alkane E. The correct answer is shown in blue. Use a sharp pencil and ruler when drawing diagrams such as this and use all of the space available. A larger diagram will be much clearer for an examiner to read. You don't have to draw a heating mantle or water bath, an arrow labelled heat is sufficient. A pear shaped flask could be used instead of a round bottom flask. Anti bumping granules must be present, however, this was not on the mark scheme for this particular question. The condenser fits into the round bottom flask. There are no gaps in this connection and this must be clear on your diagram. Arrows show the direction of flow of water into and out of the condenser, in at the bottom and out at the top. Finally, the condenser must not be sealed at the top. This would lead to a build up of pressure and could be dangerous. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please post in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Take care and good luck with your studies.